How you doing? Good. Uh, thanks so much for being here. You First bet. of all, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal had to run, but apparently you ride with Jake and with Matthew McConaughey. You guys ride together, and people have called you the Spandex Squad. Is that true? <laughs> well, Quad would be four, so that's oh. three. I said Squad. Oh, Squad. Yeah, yeah. But if oh. you want to make it four... <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody know that Conan rides? That's his big thing. I didn't know I that ride, until Well, today. it's not my big thing, uh, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that later. Please, not on the air. Listen, uh, no, I, uh, I do ride. I, I, I love it. I, I really do love it. I well, wish McConaughey I could is in Australia, so we need, a, we need a, you know, a third guy. You can be it. Really? Yeah. I'll come with you guys anytime. Yeah. That'd be fantastic, yeah. yeah. Let's not go real fast, though. <laughs> and let's stay indoors. They don't go very fast, so <laughs> you know? it's OK. Oh, OK. <laughs> and I eat a sandwich the whole time I'm riding. <laughs> it's going to be a different experience for you. Uh, well, you know, my first question is, I am just, I was thinking about this today. Can you just go for a bike ride? Because can you get on your bike and just take a leisurely ride? Because I would think, inevitably, someone's going to come up alongside you, and you're like the, the gunfighter who, you know. Well, as you point out, I'm one of the best. Yeah, yeah. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't tried me we out were, yet. You don't know, man. During the monologue, I, I, Jake yeah. was really pissed about that. I got to tell you. Really? And he said one. He was like, "One of? What's one he of talking the best, about? The greatest of all time? No, How's no, that?" No, 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 no. <laughs> That's not true either. That's not true either. Uh, the best on the planet Earth right now. The best guy from Texas to ever do the tour. Yeah, exactly. Maybe. Yeah. But, uh, anyways, what were we saying? Well, I was, <laughs> this whole interview thing. Uh, no, can you just go for a ride, or do people and, and sort of chill out and just ride your bike, or does your, you know, do you feel like that competitive uh, nature coming back? It depends when you're where you ride. I mean, not, most of the time I ride at home in, in, in Austin, so it's it's quiet. You don't really right. see anybody. If you rode here in Central Park, you know, you tend to run into some folks. So right, and some people would probably think, "There's Lance Armstrong. I'm going to see what he's got," yeah. and uh, they'd be. <laughs> They'd be fools, but uh, <laughs> that, I'm really not very fast anymore. So uh, I find that shockingly hard to believe. <laughs> yeah. I, one time I, I, I did get um, we say in cycling dropped. I got I, I sort of got dropped by a, a messenger one time in Central Park. To be honest, is that true? That's true. Drop meaning uh, this meaning guy. I was. Yeah. He was wiped faster you out. Than me. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. By a bike messenger. Yeah. But it all depends because that person could have just, you could have been doing like your 15th hour and that guy could have just gotten on his bike <laughs> yeah. after drinking like 10 lattes. So <laughs> it's very hard to know. You are uh, famously, and I think this is one of your great uh, talents among many, is famously uh, competitive and intense. You were famous for what was called the look. You could just look, at, look back at other cyclists mm -hmm. and then it would intimidate them. <laughs> uh, was that intentional? Did you no, develop that, the look? No, they really, they said I did that once, but, uh, you know, it in fact was not the I'm case. getting it now, by the way. You're staring at me, <laughs> and I just wet myself, and, uh... uh no, it, 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 uh, the look got, got a lot of play, but it was, I was actually looking back down the road to sort of see what the situation was, because right. in cycling, teamwork is so important, so I sort of made a move on a very famous mountain in France, and I was looking back thinking, Basically thinking, oh hell, if this doesn't work, where are my teammates? Right. But it, you know, from the angle of the, of the TV cameras, it looked like I was staring this guy down. Yeah. And you know, it's cool though. You know, it's just, <laughs> he, he didn't think it was very cool. No. Oh, he, it, it, it angered angered him. Who was it? Was it? It was Jan Ulrich. Well, Jan Ulrich, yeah. who you defeated. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, in the Tour de France alone, I think five times yeah. he's, I think he's he was, was, yeah. Six times? You can correct so, me if you want. Four, I Forty-five think. times, I think. <laughs> he finished second to you. You must, he must see I'm you not. in his nightmares. Your head just laughing, turning around his head in the night. Do you think he wakes up every night like, I'm strong! I think he, uh... <laughs> he was a good rival. He, he, he kept things interesting. He mm -hmm. motivated us and uh, kept me awake at night. So, I mean, he was, he was a guy that, that, uh, that we really wanted to beat. They just uh, retired, actually. You talk just... about, you know, you mentioned something, and a lot of people who, who don't, uh, you know, who just have a casual understanding of the sport of cycling just think it's about the person who's going the fastest. There's a lot of strategy involved. Mm -hmm. And you had a, it's, a, it's kind of a, a famous move where you pretended to be more fatigued than you were. Mm -hmm. And I want to pr mispronounce this, but was it Laup Duez? Is that right? right. Same day as the look. Yeah, uh, same day as the look. What, t can you explain what you did there? Because it's pretty cool. Uh, well, the, the thing about cycling is the stages are five or six hours long, so you have three or four different passes in one day, and then it'll ultimately finish on one hard one. But 
earlier on in the day, I, 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 there's a couple things that happened. Number one, I started to act like I was really suffering. Mm -hmm. uh, but the other thing is that all of the riders have two-way communication with the team cars. And it's no secret that a lot of the teams pick up the, or they intercept the signal, and so they listen to the other teams. I mean, we would do it from time to time. Right. Uh, <clears throat> and so we knew that they were listening to us. So it played, not only was I on TV acting like I was suffering while the race is on live TV, which they're watching in the car, mm -hmm. but I'm also on the radio telling the team director that, oh my God, I, this has got to be the worst day of my life. I, can't, I feel terrible. I'm suffering like a dog. I'll never win the tour again. And then we got to the last climb, Alpe d'Huez, and I gave, you know, what was supposedly the look. Right. And then one by two minutes. So it was, it so was a nice you little... You, yeah, you convinced them and, and it's, it's... You convinced them to probably, uh, to, to spend their energy foolishly, yeah. They, yeah. they rode on the front, of, they did the work all day long for us. So it was, it was, it made for a nice drama. Everybody believed it, which was kind of nice, except for, you know, our guys. I kept having to wink at, at my teammates because they kept thinking, is he really faking this thing? Because I, right. I, I, I guess I really did look like I was suffering, so. Right. Worked out. What, what, what's uh, interesting about, one of the many things that's interesting about cycling is that it's a strange combination. It's very cutthroat and intense, mm -hmm. but also there's sort of an old world gentility. Mm -hmm. It's polite. If a rider falls, you know, you mm -hmm. stop, you wait for your rival to get back yeah, up I, again. I, and I think some of that's changed over the years. I mean, this is a hundred year old sport and, mm -hmm. and back in the day you had five or ten guys that were really competitive. Now you have 50 or 60 or 70 guys that all want to be very competitive. Uh, so the sort of the, the gentleman's code there has kind of gone away and, and cycling is much more intense and much more cut, cutthroat than it used to be. And then it's also much more international. I mean, you have Americans, Australians, Russians, Asians. You have a lot of guys that are, that are wanting to get to the Tour de France and wanting to win. And, uh, so, I mean, if somebody stops, you know, if, for example, if the yellow jersey in the Tour de France stops to go to the bathroom, mm -hmm. it, everybody pretty much slows down. Yeah. Normally. It's, it's kind of fascinating. You don't see that in a lot of other yeah. sports, where right. there are a lot of sports where if someone's not to the ground, they don't even help you up. But here, it's, it's sort of a neat mix, I think. There's a mix. Yeah, there is a mix. Uh, there's a talk of a movie uh, about you and your life. Have you thought about who you want to, to play you? Uh, well, <laughs> I want to do it myself. No, really? You, no. Well, you could do you that. You might be good. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, I yeah. thought of that before, and then I, today I heard you rode, so that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Long this would be maybe the worst mistake of your career. <laughs> I got it all sorted out. It's going to be Conan O'Brien. See. Um. <laughs> Long story short, uh, I, I mean, I think somebody needs to be passionate about the disease and, and, mm -hmm. and represent that part of my life well. Right. And, and right. the fact that, that I mean, the thing I'm most proud of, if, if you know, on my tombstone, what would you want to be known as? I would want to be known as, as a as a cancer survivor and as a father. Um, and then somewhere down the line, you would want to be known as a cyclist. Mm -hmm. uh, and then onto that part, you need somebody that can actually get on a bike and pedal and ride and look look like a bike rider. I mean, did you see Breaking Away? Yeah, it was a great it, it, movie. Years but ago, great movie. They but clearly weren't cyclists. Those guys. I mean, it was it was right. it looked a little fake. Right. You could see that they all had motors on their bicycles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that would be important. It's someone who's who captures all those. Uh, yeah. uh, we'll the, find somebody, the essence yeah. of what you what you're about. But and what, the... what will people learn about you in that movie if it's done accurately that, that they don't know about you now? Is there something that they'll find out about Lance Armstrong that we don't know now? Uh, I haven't read the script, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I might learn some things too. Yeah, yeah. You have no control in Hollywood. Right. Once you basically. You'll be shocked at what happens. Yeah. You'll be shooting guns in this movie. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than shooting other things. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Which uh, I've heard. Um, you know what? Uh, it's a huge uh, thrill to have you on Thank the program. You. I'm, Thank a, you. I'm a huge fan, and uh, we were all very excited that you could be here, and I Thank hope you. you come back sometime. I will. All right. Thank hey, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Lance Armstrong. We'll take a break. When we come back, Bayside. So stick around.